Hey guys, we're back. I just got the cylinder heads back from the machine shop and I wanted to show you something. I started cleaning one of them and I wasn't going to record it because, you know, cleaning is obvious. I would just say blow air into each uh, oil gallery, each every single hole you, you find, just blow air and make sure it's clean, right? Even though, even though the your block or your head was at the machine shop and they do clean it you should always recheck okay and I'll show you what I found so check this out so this is the cleaned up head I took out this plug and there's one more on the back um, but that's for for coolant so just blew air through there um, and then put uh, RTV on the plug and put them back in then I started blowing air into these little oil passages right where the camshaft sits okay these little guys and it just kind of like a black watery like watered down oil came out very little bit no big deal you know see like something like just kind of like dirt okay but then I've noticed these little metal shavings I don't know if you can see this but here's one here's another and another and another another see all this stuff See that? So take a guess, what would that do to your engine inside if it, if it would uh, start to circulate through your whole engine? Mm -hmm. Always make sure, man. Check it five times if you, have, if you have to. These little particles, these little metal shavings will, will mess up your day. Let's say it would get through, come out in here, through here, okay, where the camshaft sits and it would start scratching the surface once it's scratched or you know this here or, or this here you can see the oil passage here and you know of, after some time the scratches will get once it's scratched it will just get bigger and bigger and bigger it can ruin your head your camshaft and your whole day not to mention the um the crankshaft and uh, many other moving parts all right so what i did was I put a bolt into the main, I guess this would be the inlet for the oil, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. And then I blew air right in here, I guess this transfers the oil from the head to the block or the other way around, not sure. And then you got holes everywhere at every single lifter one per side and then this here this passage there's two here so you can see like this inner pipe goes here and then you can take these off and uh, blow air through these passages here but they're not easy to take out so I didn't I didn't want to break uh, these plugs or strip them on the inside these allen plugs so I didn't so what I did instead I put that bolt in here I blew air what I showed you and kind of felt each hole if the air is coming out or not every single one and then uh, another little guy fell out I don't know if you can see it tiny little metal shaving oh no it disappeared on me well now I lost it I think we are good I don't see any more dirt coming out no more metal shavings here whatever came out I kept Clearing this until I saw no more. 
Now don't forget these little guys. These holes here, they just go through. There's four. Okay, what happens uh, when you have that oil seal here? The oil needs to go back. So as as it uh, as the oil comes down, collects here, it goes in here, and then the seal stops it, and then it goes back inside the head. These are so these are just through and through. Blow air to the outside. Okay, this one is ready to go. Now I gotta install the valve seals and put the valves back on, the lifters, the valve springs, all that stuff, and uh, install the cams, torque it down, and measure the lash again. One more thing, don't forget the inside where the valve travels up and down. So the valve, you know, it goes on the other side. This is where the spring sits and holds the valve in place and the valve on this this shiny area part of the valve it uh, goes up and down very very small very little tolerances inside there and I see dirt in every each one air will most likely not take all of it out so what I do is I simply spray brake cleaner inside and then blow it out again and that works very well. Some may say I'm taking too long to clean this but look what I just found. You see that there? Right there. And that's a big one too. Gotta get it out. What we're doing today we're gonna install new valve seals. Valves are already cleaned. Actually I did not clean the intake valves. I will I not here. I didn't know lap them is what I meant. If you want to see that video me lapping the exhaust valves, I am going to provide a link to that video. So I did clean and lap the exhaust valves. Came out pretty nice. It was done done by hand. And I did clean the intake valves on top here. So all this, obviously you gotta keep this in order. I already measured the lash before I took them off. This surface has been cleaned. Here you can see the, the lapping job I have done. These were like that when I took them out. This engine, this head has 37,000 miles on it. So this was a kind of a refresh. That's why I didn't uh, give them to a machine shop for lapping. First of all, it's super expensive. And I really didn't need to. So as you can see, they decked the surface to block. This I cleaned myself. This is where the intake manifold goes on. So first I'm going to start with the valve seals. Now this is the intake side. You can tell by looking where the intake ports are. So these four are going to be intake. And the intake valve seals are gray, dark gray like this exhaust ones are green like this easy to tell apart what i'm going to do first i'm going to apply a tiny amount of oil where the valves slide on just a little bit is enough i'm going to take one Gray seal, take a magnet, make sure I'm straight. And just push it on, just so they stay in place. Not trying to push all the way in. What you need to make sure is that this area here, this flat area, touches the metal top area here. That's when you know they're all the way down. Now I'm going to grab a 10mm socket. 
I like a 12 point because it's more round a 10 mil because it fits nicely on the outside of the actual seal you don't wanna this part is softer and this part is actually part of this metal here so you wanna grab it you wanna push it down on the outside I'll take a small hammer and hit it lightly tap it until the, the sound kind of changes to more of a solid sound you actually feel it more than you hear it now I'm just gonna recheck my work I'm gonna take a small mirror just making sure that the two surfaces are touching, it's all the way in And that's it for the valve seals. Okay, so now that the valve seals are installed, I put the head on uh, these two blocks, or four I should say. So the valves are, there's access to them because we're, we're going to be using this kind of tool, this kind of clamp, and that's going to go right here. So we need the room. So we're going to take the intake valve. Oil it up. Make sure there is no dry spots. Turn it so the oil gets everywhere. And push it in. I'm gonna turn it some more just to make sure it's if it's making a squeaky noise or you, you hear it grind or you feel it grind, then there's something wrong. There's either dirt or on the seat or by this oil seal but since it's all quiet nice and smooth it's good I'm gonna wipe this off everything needs to be super clean Alright, now that the valves are in, I'm going to flip the head. Okay, so this is the intake side still. I'm going to take the, the keepers, the spring and whatever the spring seat may be, I don't know what you call these individual parts. I'm going to wipe this off. That goes on the bottom there, that just sits there wipe off the spring, the spring they've been sitting out in the open for a few days actually maybe a week so just a good wipe I'm 
Now only with this tool. There are different tools, but this tool does okay too. Just takes a bit of time. What you want to do, there are different attachments. So you want to pick the right size. Set it on top of the the hat, whatever the valve, the spring hat. I don't. I have no idea what to call that. Top of the spring part. And we're going to turn it, making sure the other side of the tool hits the top of the valve. Let me show you what I mean. So the valve, that's the valve right here in the middle of the valve. That's where that's supposed to sit. So now we're going to compress the spring. Now the, the walls where the lifter moves up and down and that actually spins too. Right between the wall and the spring, you gotta watch out for that wall. That's like almost like your cylinder wall. If you scratch it, then you're gonna damage the lifter over time. So you want to make sure that you're not moving the tool too much. I'm actually trying to keep it steady with my left hand as I turn it, compress it with my right. This is probably plenty. I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil on the valve. I'm going to throw in one of the keepers there. Oil is there to for the keeper to make it stick to the valve. Once that's in, I'm going to try and turn it. Now the second keeper, and that's it. See, if it wasn't for the oil, they would not stick like that. You don't want, and then again, you don't want to compress it too much because the keepers will fall in uh, too far, and you're going to have fun taking them out. So now we're going to unscrew the tool. Now I'm actually pushing the tool down on the spring. So the other side of the tool on the bottom there does not scratch the surface of the head. And this is what I mean when I take it out. Okay, there is the risk of this side of the tool scratching the surface, the finished nice surface of the head. I just did one, but I forgot to hit record. So let's do one more. Let's do one more. So clean, wipe the spring off.
And that's it for the for installing the valves. Now what I'm gonna do, because I did lap the exhaust valves and I cleaned the intake valves, I am gonna check lash again. So I am gonna install. Well, let's do it right now. So I'm gonna give it a final wipe. I got my lifters. I'm gonna wipe them off. Every time you install these, they need to be clean, especially the outside walls. Now that they're clean, I'm gonna oil each one up. Drop them in. Make sure they kind of drop on their own. If they don't want to go in on them by themselves, then there is something wrong. It should go in easy. And they're all different. Check this out. They all have different numbers. See this one for example is 491. This one was 490. Okay, this is the exhaust one. This one says 510. So that's the measurement from here to here. See what I mean with these when you put these in? Don't force them. They will just drop on their own. Now we're going to install the camshafts. So we're going to need oil here. So this is the exhaust cam, you see a little EX, I'm going to wipe this off, and the intake one will say IN. I'm going to put oil where the caps go. Be careful. Kind of made a mistake. I put too much oil here. So the oil does not drip into the holes where the bolts go. It's no big deal right now because I am taking them off again because the head bolts are underneath the camshafts. Okay, same thing with the caps. They all have markings on them. This little eye is for intake. So this guy will go here and you got the arrow pointing to towards the front of the engine. This one has an E for extra horsepower now I, I am going to clean this surface up with a brush we want this piece to sit nice and flat on top of the head so our measurements are true. Actually it's coming off with this paper. Okay, now that this is clean
I like to check the bolts. There's no dirt underneath there. These need to be torqued to 10 foot pounds of torque. Since everything is torqued, they turn nice and easy. You got oil everywhere between the cams and the lifters. When I put this gauge in there, I'm not gonna scratch the surface. So now, what I need to do is I need to check the lash, which is the gap right between the camshafts and the lifters, right there. Why I need to recheck the lash? Because I did uh, lap the valves, I did some cleaning, so I need to recheck it, and I so I don't have any surprises when I go to install it. Now. Right after I check them, I'm gonna have to take them off the cam, the camshafts, and uh, once I install the heads on the block, I'm gonna have to do this all over again and recheck the lash again just to be sure. But that way, I will know. I'll be more confident that it's it's gonna be right on the spot. All right, guys, thanks for watching. There's more to come. I decided to film the whole engine rebuild, do a step-by-step. -step. I'm sure it's going to be a series. It's going to take a lot of time to put it all back together. There's going to be some modifications. I'm going to be installing, uh, most likely, I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to do a uh, top feed conversion. The 06 STIs had a side feed injection or injectors from 07 up they had top feed fuel injectors which is all the turn tuners tell me it's much better so uh, I do want to get a tiny bit more power out of it so that's probably what I'm gonna do along with uh, oil catch cans which I will explain why I'm doing it what are the benefits that's it consider subscribing if you don't want to miss any of the future videos I know there's plenty videos out there on Subarus, EJ25s, rebuilds and all that stuff, but figured one more will not hurt. Thanks for watching, see you guys later.